Good day chaps. So today's video is going to cover the development of the FV721 Fox armoured car. This will be a three part series. Part one will be the background. Part two we'll look at the variants. And part three we're going to look at its fate and what is removed from service. So to the beginning, where did Fox come from? For this we need to look at several separate vehicles and their lines of development. These include the GSOR 1006, GSOR 1010, the AVR and its follow-on projects GSOR 3301 and GSR 3358. We'll also have to have a look at other projects in service, notably the FV600 lines such as Saladin and the FV700 line which is the Diamond and Ferret family as what would become FOX includes elements from all of these projects. This video will cover each aspect and look at what brought FOX into service and the tragic mistakes that saw it quickly being removed later on. So we'll begin with the FV701 Ferret. This lightly armoured car came about as a result of the 1947 request for a light reconnaissance vehicle. The vehicle in question was to replace the old Daimler Dingo which had been in service since 1940 and, while a very reliable and nippy little scout vehicle, it lacked the ability to be conventionally upgraded with heavier weapons, although some efforts were made. One of its key features was the Daimler Fluid Flywheel, which allowed the vehicle to go both forwards and backwards at the same speed, allowing itself to get into, and more importantly, out of trouble just as quickly. A few late model Dingoes were given turrets and used in the Malayan emergency. Over 6,500 Dingoes were produced and, despite their age, the Dingoes saw service in dwindling numbers until the late 1960s. It would also be prudent to quickly mention the Daimler armoured car, of which some 2,500 were made. These were made parallel to the Dingo and featured the same innovative flywheel for rapid manoeuvring, but were more heavily armed and armoured, relatively speaking, with a 2-pounder or 40mm gun or a 76mm close support howitzer and was one of the few vehicles to make use of the Little John adapter fitted to its guns. This was a squeeze board device devised by the Czechs that used armour-piercing composite non-rigid or APCNR rounds, giving it the ability to tackle all but the heaviest German tanks. However, the later Ferret did not evolve from this vehicle, but it's worth noting all the same. These Daimler armoured cars would see service until the late 70s with various nations. From the Dingo came the Ferret, or, as it was originally called, the Field Mouse, with development starting in 1949 and entering service in 1952. The vehicle shared many of the features of the Dingo, including the drivetrain, but featured marginally improved protection and an improved top speed of 58 miles per hour. But other than the Bren light machine gun, or general purpose machine gun, it remained lightly armed, like the Dingo. Original Mark I Ferrets, having no turret, being an open-topped vehicle, was quickly followed by the Mark 1-2, which had a raised superstructure on top to offer the crew some shelter from the elements and retain the light machine gun for defence. The Mark II ferret was the first armed with a turret, albeit a very small one, with a .30 machine gun for local defence. Overall, the ferret would go through numerous submarks and types, with small changes. Notable models were the Mark II-6 with Vigilant, or the Visually Guided Infantry Light Anti-Tank Missile, which didn't see service so long as so the missiles were problematic at best, and only saw service for a very short period of time. Another notable ferret is the Mark V, or the FV-712, with four swing fire missiles mounted in a launch box, as well as a .30 machine gun. The ferret would see service from 1952 until 1990, and was even around in the first Gulf War. Over 4,500 ferrets were made and served in over 40 countries, with 19 nations still using them today. From the ferrets, three more interesting variants were made. The ill-fated Ferret 80, which gained no interest. The heavy missile ferret with either the Malkara or Orange William missile, both of which were only prototypes. And a radar-based ferret with a ZB-298 radar on it which would later appear on the Ferret Mark VI, but we'll come back to that vehicle in the Daimler story later on. The other vehicle we need to touch upon 
is the FV601 Saladin. The Saladin, as all the vehicles in the FV600 family name, have names that begin with the letter S, Saladin, Salamander, Stalwart, Saracen, etc., began shortly after the Second World War to replace the AEC armoured car. The AEC, or Associated Equipment Company, produced this heavily armoured and armed car during the Second World War as a private venture, and some 600 were made. Armed with a variety of guns up to 75mm and packing 65mm of armour, the AEC was better equipped and protected than most German heavy tanks until the arrival of Tiger. Although she sacrificed her speed to achieve this, being able to manage a top speed of 40 miles an hour, the AEC would also see service until the late 70s abroad. The replacement was the Saladin, which began in 1947. Although the development was initially stalled, as considerable time and money were instead being thrown into the FV200 and FV300 projects. The initial Saladin model was to be armed with a two-pounder pipsqueak gun. This fired APDS rounds out at 1,295 meters a second for 85 millimeters of penetration at 60 degrees to one kilometer. But unlike the earlier squeeze ball weapons, could also fire high explosive rounds, although quite how effective those rounds would have been is questionable. The original Saladin vehicle also had a four-man crew, with three in the turret and the driver, the extra crewman being able to operate the vehicle's reverse mode and drive backwards at high speed. The variant with a 40mm gun was to be known as FV601A, while the FV601B was to be equipped with a new low-pressure L5A1 76mm gun firing Hesch rounds, which was the vehicle ultimately chosen and passed to Alvis to produce, although the first 10 or so would be made by Crossley Motors. Alvis began to produce the production Saladins under the designation FV601C, and the FV601D for Germany, rebranded the SW3, was a police service. Several variants were made, or proposed, including one with a 30mm Raden cannon, there were swing fire armed versions, and so on. The Saladins were well liked for their durability, toughness, and ability to keep operating even after taking quite extreme damage. They proved popular in the Aden conflicts and were briefly famous for fighting a desperate rearguard defence operation in Kuwait, defending the Royal Palace against Iraqi T-72s and even holding them off for a small while. The Saladins served on in many nations and some are still in use today. Like the ferrets before them, they were also those fitted with a ZB-298 radar. So with Ferret and Saladin covered, let's move on to the third part, which is the development of the Fox and how it ties all three together. For this, we need to step back in time to the early 60s and the AA-FRV project, or the Air Portable Armoured Fighting and Reconnaissance Vehicles, under General Staff Operational Requirement GSOR-1006 and GSR-1010, which were issued in early 1961. These projects were undertaken by the FV, RDE and the RADI feasibility study teams to design a light vehicle to fill a multi-purpose role, a support platform in the form of the GSR 1006 and reconnaissance roles with support aspects in the GSR 1010. By December 1961, the first plans were presented to the general staff with a variety of layouts and ideas. The GSR-1006 vehicles were both tracked and wheeled vehicles with large 105mm guns, autoloaders and an entire battery of swing fire missiles mounted on them, enabling them to offer devastating amounts of firepower. These small vehicles, tracked or wheeled, would be the support vehicles to the 1010 reconnaissance vehicles. A wide variety of them was drawn up and even the STT got involved with their version, Excalibur, which had the same 105mm gun and could also contain a batch of swing fire missiles in its body. In the second set of vehicles, the 1010s, a reconnaissance role was also presented. These were again light vehicles, both tracked and wheeled, but either had smaller guns, 20, 25 or 30mm, and a few 76mm guns as found on the Saladin, and of course the ubiquitous swing fire missiles. These GSOR 1010 series were designed to be the eyes and ears of the heavier support platforms. 
On the 7th of December, the general staff decided that rather than having two separate GSORs, each with both tracked and wheeled configurations, that instead the project should be combined and both sets of requirements rolled into one system. This would retain the name briefly of GSOR 1010 and was under the watchful eye of the director of the Royal Armoured Corps who had revised the project in 1963. This later reworked GSOR 1010 was then given the name AVR or Armoured Vehicle Reconnaissance. The AVR vehicle was to be wheeled or tracked and was to replace both Ferret and the Saladin. AVR was to have the following roles an anti-APC platform with a 20mm gun, anti-tank version with missiles, a fire support platform with a 76mm gun, and a liaison vehicle. It was also envisioned that the APC, command vehicle, and a mobile ambulance could be built into the family. At the same time, a separate study alongside Australia also noticed the need for a fast and very light armoured platform that could be airdropped easily at a moment's notice. This was to be known as the Lightweight High Mobility Tracked Vehicle, or LHMTV, which called for a light platform that could be lifted by a helicopter and deployed anywhere around the world rapidly. Meanwhile, AVR back home carried on until August 1964, where it was decided to split the vehicles again. These would now be split into a wheeled version for reconnaissance duties and a tracked version for support. Thus, the AVR, Armoured Vehicle Reconnaissance became the Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance and each role separated by a letter and a new GSR number. The wheeled vehicles would become the GSR 3358 CVRW or wheeled leading to the FOX while the others would go on to merge with the LHMTV program and become the CVRT or tracked leading to the Scorpion light tank. The CVRTs would take on the role of fire support and guided missile roles, and the wheeled vehicles the reconnaissance and anti-APC duties. We'll cover the rest of the Scorpion story in another vid, however from here on we shall remain focused on the FOX. The new GSR 3358 with the name FOX first used was to be part of a new FV720 series, a follow-on from the Ferret FV700 family. Design work commenced in October 1965. In this report they set down the roles required. The vehicle would provide medium and close reconnaissance in a limited and general war, provide battlefield surveillance, provide limited anti-armour and anti-personnel fire support for infantry in airborne-led environments where tanks were not available, as well as provide internal security roles and be able to take part in CBR duties and liaison roles. Around this time, another GSR creeps in, which is GSR 3340. This called for a liaison vehicle to be built along similar lines as the CVRW with less complex armament, which in turn led to the FV722 Vixen being created, although only in very limited numbers as the project was dropped after only a few were made. The Vixen, or the Fat Fox, had a similar hull, although with differences in a small machine gun turret originally made for the FV-432 was added on top. It's worth noting that despite online sources, the Vixen was not originally part of CVRW and was instead CVLW, or Combat Vehicle Liaison Wheeled. With the Mason Defence Review in 1975, the Vixen was dropped from proceedings and only very few survived. Meanwhile, work on the Fox concept continued. She would be placed in armoured regiments, armoured car and recon regiments, as well as the Royal Armoured Corps Parachute Regiment Cyclops and would replace the Saladin, the Ferret Vigilant and the Ferret Mark II. While Fox was undergoing her feasibility studies, the building aspect went out to tender and the contract was picked up by Daimler. And this is where we meet up with our Daimler timeline. The first vehicles mocked up were based heavily on the Ferret chassis and the vehicle was known for a short time as the Ferret Mark VI or the Heavy Ferret. The gun chosen for Fox was the Raden, an amalgamation of Royal Armament Research and Development Establishment and the Royal Arms Small Factory, RSAF, Enfield. This weapon was originally a 5 round strip clip weapon which had been designed for the AVRs, along with a coaxial 7.62mm weapon, although this was later changed to a 3 round clip. 
Several weapons were looked at. The 20mm for its high rate of fire was dropped due to inadequate performance at range and the 25mm due to lack of behind armour effects. The 30mm however was able to penetrate up to 40mm at 1km with a high degree of accuracy. The Raden gun was made specifically for these short controlled high accuracy bursts as at the time the spray and prey type cannons usually derived from aircraft weapons were not deemed accurate enough at long range. It was requested that Fox have originally minus 20 degrees of gun depression. However, this was dropped as it was not possible and it was settled on minus 14 degrees. Several types of ammunition were to be used. Initially, it could fire the Hispano Suiza 831L rounds and the gun was designed from the outset to be able to fire this round while work on the ammunition was being designed to prevent any delays. Following this, a dedicated armor-piercing special explosive round or APSE was made with each round containing 28 grams of explosive filler. This was to be used against softer targets where its behind armour effects would be more lethal and provide some protection against hovering helicopters. For tougher targets, the 30mm APDS tracer was made. This was able to perforate 40mm at 45 degrees out to 1.5 kilometers. Other rounds included practice rounds and a high explosive incendiary round. Although each clip came with three rounds, it was possible to quickly fire six rounds in a burst and a total of 96 rounds were carried. For close protection, a 7.62mm machine gun was fitted as well as two banks of smoke dischargers. One of the key features of this design, which carried over from the AVR as well as the Ferret and Zaldin, was the inclusion of a radar system. This was to be the ZB-298 and was a mobile, tactical, ground-based pulse Doppler radar, which was developed by the Marconi Elliott Avionic Systems Limited. The ZB was supposed to be effective out to about 10 km tops and worked by warning the user via acoustic and visual aids the direction, size and volume of anything moving by its Doppler shift. It was stated by the manufacturer that this was able to differentiate between animals and people. However, in practice it was less so. Users of the device, which was used in Northern Ireland in an attempt to track IRA insurgents at night, claimed it would regularly confuse herds of sheep with approaching IRA gunmen. The ZB system was also used in a variety of other vehicles, from the 432, the Saladin, and even Chieftain tanks. Other essential criteria for Fox was the inclusion of a built in night vision device, leading them to fit a GEC Marconi SPAV L2A1 passive night sight, which was fitted inside an armoured box to the left hand side of the gun, which was closed up when the vehicle was not in use. The sight offered both a wide angle low magnification and narrow high angle magnification mode used for shooting, and an electrically controlled iris would snap shut as each round fired to prevent any bloom from disorientating the gunner. A large infrared spotlight was originally planned for long range night observation but later dropped. The commander also had a full, all-round binocular vision, as did the loader, while the driver could switch out his periscope quickly for a passive night sight if required. Mobility-wise, the designers chose to go with a 4.2-litre Jaguar XK engine, militarised as the Jaguar J60, which delivered 160 brake horsepower. This was then merged with a David Brown pre-selected gearbox with 5 forward and 5 reverse. Despite a weight of 6.6 .6 tonnes, the Fox was able to hit 104 km an hour, although not that you'd want to. This engine was chosen as the regular B60 in service was not powerful enough to meet the GSR requirements, but Daimler owned part of Jaguar at the time and so made the recommendation. The engine and gearbox also suffered a fair bit in service. Excess fuel caused bore wash and drivers trying to overcome this often found the gears ground down. The engine was also prone to overheating, warping and corrosion as the head bolts passed through the water jacket and on long distance runs the crankshaft would also twist and the pistons would lose their timing resulting in breakdowns. Some of these problems were overcome later but the Fox would always go on to have a problematic engine and gearbox. The Fox like the ferret also had the fluid flywheel which allowed it to rapidly traverse back and forwards at the same top speeds if required. 
but without the ferret's little back windows this was not recommended. Protection wise the Fox was designed to be largely made out of 7039 aluminium to save weight and was designed to be resistant to small arms fire and heavy machine guns out to 200 meters or more as well as shell splinters from 105 mm rounds but nothing else. It was originally intended to be made entirely of aluminium by a few small structural supports but this was changed later which would go on to have some dire and fatal consequences. There were other ideas planned for Fox as well. These included an electrical defence system for example that would electrify the outer hull to prevent people from boarding the vehicle which was sensibly dropped early on. Due to the prevailing fear of nuclear biological and chemical weapons being used in the 60s Daimler also wanted to make the Fox to be able to operate in a nuclear battlefield. To do this she had to be resistant to chemical attacks have an anti-radiation spool liner, heat flash resistance and a photochromatic shutter system for protection against light flash, although again very few were ever fitted. Production began with Damon in 1966 and they built the first 14 or 15, sources vary. These were the initial prototypes which are now very rare. These prototype platforms are identifiable by the circular openings on the storage boxes and a T number stamped into the site system as well as a collimator on top of the turret. The prototypes went for evaluation and production was ordered in July 1970, however not with Daimler. Despite their work and planning, the production was passed to Royal Ordnance, who had not taken part in the design and development work. This devastated Daimler, who had had 70 years of experience in building armoured cars, and they saw it as a great betrayal. Daimler finished building the last of the ferrets they had on order, and shut down all of their military production lines and never went back, ending the long years of Daimler armoured cars. Royal Ordnance would then produce Fox, with Alvis maintaining Ferret. Royal Ordnance itself was brought out by Vickers, who were then sold to Alvis before they were all in turn swallowed up by BAE. But this is not the end of the Fox story. In part 2, due soon, we will cover the variants of Fox, who made them, and a little bit more about the production machines. Well guys, if you like that video or you want part 2, let me know. Give us a like or a share, as the more I can get this channel to grow, the more I can get the research done. Let me know what vehicles you want in future, what other information you want, and come and join our Discord channel for a friendly chat and all stuff tank related. Until next time, toodle pip.